Hey folks, welcome to the Do Yourself Dad channel. In this video, we're doing the first step in a couple videos of doing a massive electrical upgrade to our travel trailer. So on our trailer, we're not just replacing the lead acid battery, we're doing a massive upgrade. So we're gonna be removing this 61 amp hour lead acid battery and replacing it with this 200 amp hour lithium battery from Time USB. Now, with a typical lead acid battery up here, you can only deplete the battery 50 to 80% before you're damaging the battery. And that's with a deep cycle battery. With a lithium battery, you can take everything down to essentially zero. Now, the other big difference with these is with the lead acids, you have a voltage drop as it declines. These have a very flat discharge rate. So you're actually gonna get much more usable juice. So we are actually doing a massive upgrade, four times as much power more or less with this thing over the lead acid. Now let's get started. Now we're gonna start by making sure that we have no power running through the trailer. So we're gonna start by turning off our power switch that is on our 12 volt line and then unplugging the entire trailer itself so there's no juice running into the trailer. Next, we're gonna remove the battery itself. And when you're doing this, make really certain you don't accidentally touch your wrench across both terminals. I've seen people do it in the past. It does create quite a nice show, but it also can get a little painful. Now, Time USB seems to be the best bang for your buck battery that I've been able to find, and they do make them in just about every different size, capacity, and output. So I'll have a link down below so you can check out what they've got and see if they've got something that's right for you. In our case, the battery box is just held in by gravity, so that can come right out. Now, the really nice thing about these lithium batteries is if you wanna install something that's just gonna go back in your original battery box, you can pick one up and it'll about double your capacity, but we're going four times. We're gonna be going with a bigger battery box. I'm gonna show you what we've got. So in our case, we decided to put the battery inside the trailer. This is the storage bay in the front of the trailer. We're gonna be tucking it right around the corner there. Now, the reasons you would wanna do this is one, these batteries are pretty expensive, so it'll keep it you know, out of the way of thieves. But the other thing is lithium batteries don't like to be charged when they're very cold or very hot. So keeping this thing inside should help regulate the temperature of the battery. The other added benefit is I'm adding this tongue box up here. And in this, I'm gonna be able to store my leveling blocks and stuff like that. Now you don't have to go this route. You could put your lithium battery on the tongue and depending upon what size lithium battery you get, you might even be able to fit it in your original box. Now moving everything inside is not as hard as it seems. What I'm going to be doing is drilling a hole right next to that hole. That's a pass through for my gas line. I'm going to put it right next to it and I'm going to run some flexible wire loom through it so we can run the cables inside the trailer. Now, if you're going to do something like this, be sure to go underneath the trailer and check and make sure that you don't have other things in the way. I know I don't want to drill on the right side of that hole because I'll hit this. But if I go just to the left side of it, I'll get between it and the beam. So that's what we're going to do. So now using a hole saw correctly sized for a wire loom, we can come in here and drill our hole. Now with the hole drilled, we can feed our wire loom through and then pull it the rest of the way through on the bottom. Next, you're gonna take your positive and negative that have been leading to your battery. And if you're lucky and they're long enough, you'll be able to just sleeve them right up inside your trailer. In my case, my negative is long enough, my positive is not, so I'll have to extend the positive. And to do that, I picked up a spool of wire, some wire ends, and a crimping tool. Now, whatever wire you use, make sure you're using the same gauge that is already on your trailer. You don't want to go smaller. Going bigger won't hurt, but you definitely don't want to go smaller. And making new wires is actually really simple. You're going to start with the wire and you're going to cut back the insulation just a little bit. When you cut back the insulation, you want to make sure that you don't go so deep that you get into the copper core of the wire. Then we're going to sleeve a piece of shrink wrap over the wire and then take one of our terminals and slip it right over the end like so. Then the entire thing gets inserted into our crimper. And then you take your big trusty hammer. And you've got a nicely crimped end. Now I will have all this stuff linked in the description below as well if you have to make something like this. The last step is taking that piece of shrink wrap, putting it over the end, and then using a lighter or heat gun to shrink that tubing down. So now with the wires up inside the trailer, it's easiest if you get them a little bit out of the loom here, so you can pull them the rest of the way through. Now the spot that I've selected for the battery is right here, and I've done it here for a couple of reasons. This is a big open spot, and normally there's a piece of wood here that prevents everything else from coming in here. So we're gonna use this little trim piece as something to hold the battery in place, and then we're gonna secure some stuff around it as well. What I'm gonna be using here is actually some D-rings. I'm gonna screw them to the floor, and then I'm gonna run a strap over the top of the battery 
And now with that done, we can actually lift our battery in a place just like so. And then finally, we can come up here and attach our positive and negative leads. This battery also comes with safety caps that you can put over the bolts right there, which will prevent you from accidentally shorting things out later. So now you get to do the fun part. Flip on the power to your trailer and flip on your lights. See if everything works. If it did, Congratulations, you got lithium batteries on your trailer and now you're gonna be able to camp for much longer boondocking without running out of juice. Now this project is not completely done. There's still some things you need to do. You wanna make sure that the inverter on your trailer, your charger, will support lithium batteries. Some will and some won't. If you have one that will, good, you got nothing left to do. If you have one that doesn't, I'm gonna have a video on my other channel, my car DIY channel, that'll show you how to install it. It's not that hard, it's something you can do in probably about 20 minutes at home with basic hand tools. Now, I'm gonna have a follow-up video to this one where we're gonna do more to our electrical system. We're gonna be adding solar, a solar charge controller, a shunt, and an inverter so we can run this whole thing off solar, off grid, and be able to run all of our appliances, even 110. So if that interests you, hit that subscribe button. It'll be coming out real soon. If it is already out, I'll have it in the pinned comment down below. Now, everything I use today, I'm gonna to have linked down below so you can check everything out for yourself if this is something that interests you. If this video did help you out, give it a great big thumbs up. Let me know what kind of stuff you're working on. Maybe I'll make a video just for you. And of course, thanks for watching.